House Speaker Nancy Pelosi huddled up with congressional lawmakers in her caucus, the Democrats, and essentially persuaded them or attempted to persuade them to not only vote in favor of the pared back budget reconciliation bill, which did away with all of the popular provisions that progressives wanted. But she wants them to also cheerlead on behalf of the bill. Let me give you the statements. This is during a meeting, closed door meeting with progressive lawmakers. She said, embrace this, embrace this, Speaker Nancy Pelosi told Democrats during a private meeting Monday evening, and have a narrative of success. <laughs> then House Majority Leader Steady Hoyer jumps in and says, if we don't act like we're winning, the American people won't believe it either. How about the American people won't believe it because you didn't deliver on your promises? How about the American people know you failed because you happened to fail. See, I, I think that they assume that their constituents and their voters are morons yeah. who have such short attention and memories, right? That they forget that just a few months ago, the Democratic Party was promising the moon and the stars. Swearing that if they could just get those two Democratic senators elected in the Senate runoff races in Georgia, well, then it would be a new day in America. They would have the majority in the Senate and the House, and they could reverse the Trump era tax cuts, and they could materially benefit Americans' lives. And then all of a sudden, we get garbage. We get a bipartisan infrastructure deal that's nothing more than a corporate handout bill meant to privatize public infrastructure. And then we get a budget reconciliation bill that started off as something decent and then was pared back down into everything that corporations would want. The only thing that remains as of today is the universal pre-K. And the only reason why corporations haven't touched that, the only reason why they haven't pared that back is because they want kids to be taken care of in pre-K so parents can go back to the mines. That's the only reason they're looking out for their self interest. So Democrats, People are gonna see you as failures because you're failing. It's yeah. that simple. So guys, you can tell we're honest because what we told you that when, hey, when they had the good provisions in the bill, lowering drug prices, putting dental and vision into Medicare and actual real climate change proposals, we say, hey, you know what, that's pretty good. It's not as good as we want it, but it's pretty good, we'll take that. We were honest about it, and when progressives fought and made sure that they didn't do that nonsense bipartisan bill first, we gave them all the credit in the world. You saw it with your own eyes. Now we're telling you, no, the bill got gutted. There's almost nothing left in it. And so that is why Pelosi and Steny Hoyer are going and talking to Democrats, and especially progressives, and they're telling them. Now remember, your job is to lie to the voters. Right. That is what the narrative of success is. That you know what the uh, uh, what real success is? Success. You don't need a narrative of success if you already have it. Okay. If you want on all these provisions, you wouldn't need a narrative. Here they're saying we're, we're obviously not going to get success. We're not going to win. So we're going to create a narrative of success. And and it, you saw Hoyer's quote: "Act like we're winning." Right. If we don't act like we're winning, they won't think we're winning. You know why, Sidney? Because you're not winning. But, but that's why they give the speech. Tom Brady, after winning his seventh Super Bowl, didn't have to tell the rest of his teammates, hey, act like you're winning. You know why? Because they just won the Super Bowl. They were already acting like they were winning because they actually won. Okay? When you need to trick people with total BS marketing, that's when you tell them, act like you're winning. Yeah. When I'm asking, I'm ordering you to surrender. I'm ordering you to surrender to corporate interests. And then get out there like a puppet and put on a show and act like we're winning. Cuz that's what Democrats do, we're liars. We lie to the voters a thousand times over and then we act like they won. Well, guess what, their drug prices are either gonna be lower or they're not. And by the way, you know who they'll blame most is us. They'll say, well, you guys are ruining the theater. We had a nice play, everybody had their role. And we were saying, okay, you say this and you say that, and we're not actually gonna pass anything. And these goddamn young Turks come in and ruin it. They're not credible, they're not credible. They're telling you things that are true. You can't tell things that are true, you have to act like everything is fine under corporate rule. So bottom line is though, you think, look, I wish we were that powerful. The reality is you're either gonna have lower drug prices or you aren't in Kentucky and Hawaii and Rhode Island and everywhere across this country. So when you don't have lower drug prices and Democrats told you you were going to, and you hear in the news 
that they refused to ever negotiate with drug companies, you know that they're sellouts, that they sold you out. We don't have to tell them that, they see it in the prices. So um, just to remind you all of what is already pared back and likely to be cut entirely from the bill. Politico writes that Medicare expansion, new Medicaid coverage and paid leave are all threatening to go the way of a carbon tax and the clean electricity performance plan overboard. Nothing left, so, nothing left. So with the exception of universal pre-K for the reasons that I outlined earlier. With that said though, what are progressives thinking? Well, as we film this today, there's news that later tonight, Bernie Sanders is going to give some sort of speech to essentially say that if there's no Medicare expansion, there's no deal. If there's no prescription drug negotiations, there's no deal. Obviously that speech hasn't happened yet, so we have to wait and see what the tone and tenor of that speech really will be. But I do have some statements from other progressives that do not bode well. So progressives are preparing to reluctantly embrace the one trillion plus legislation political rights. While it's definitely not the bill they wanted, it's likely the best deal they're going to get with Democrats narrow majorities in both chambers. Politico states as a fact, that's as what, a fact. That's right, they Like do. shut up and take the best deal you're gonna get. The media bullies progressives. Yeah. How's that a fact? No, you just stated it as if it was. Uh, so Pramila Jayapal, who is the head of the Congressional Progressive Caucus says- For now. The vast majority of our priorities are in. No, they're not. No, they're not. That's, that's just, just not lie. true, that's just not true. But there are a couple of areas where that's still not the case. What we'll continue to do is push as hard as we can, but just recognize that there are 50 senators and we have no margin in the Senate. Yeah, guess what? Some of our, those senators are our senators. They could also say no. Why is Manchin the only one saying no? When Manchin's the only one saying no, they're going towards one and a half trillion. It was three and a half trillion to one and a half trillion. They're not meeting in the middle. They're not meeting near three and a half trillion. They might not even meet anywhere. He might just get only one and a half trillion because Jayapal loves to surrender. That's her favorite tactic. So look, again, people in Washington will be furious. You can't say that about the an elite. Someone who's a, a member of Congress and our so-called leader, you can't say that. She'll have her, her, her feelings hurt and then she'll never talk to progressive media again. And she'll never do this and this. I don't care. I care about what's in the bill. I care about the voters. If you got nothing for us, are you really our leader? Is if your role is to take orders from Pelosi and Hoyer and act like we're winning and enforce that acting upon other progressives, you're not really our leader. And so look, nothing's set in stone. She could turn around, she could be super tough. Bernie can give a fire brand speech tonight. He doesn't have to give a fire brand speech. It doesn't, all he has to do is say no. I'm not gonna do it unless these provisions are in. That's it, I'm one of the 50 senators and you got no bills. You don't have either bill if we're not doing it. Progressives have way more leverage than they realize. Look, corporate Democrats are desperate to get these bills passed because the midterms are coming up. But remember, they're the ones who are holding up these bills because they're looking out for their corporate donors and their personal financial interests. So why give them that win? Why help them with their reelection campaigns when they've stripped every progressive priority out of the bill? And also, let's keep it real, corporations are salivating over the bipartisan infrastructure deal. They want that passed immediately. Why give corporations that win? And you also set a precedent, a pretty strong precedent indicating that progressives are weak and they're always gonna cave. Yeah, I'm sick of it. So last thing guys, look, if Jayapal turns around and says, no, we're gonna get these provisions in the bill and she gets it done, we don't need, look. I don't want to negotiate ourselves against ourselves here, but we don't need every provision in there. The mainstream media talking point about, oh, you're letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. Where's the good? Where's the good? There is no good, right? It's a way of saying, just take everything the corporations say. Okay, so I'm not saying we need a perfect, that's childish, childish. But if you get us almost nothing, that is not good. So if you get us a couple of those provisions and they're big changes like negotiating drug prices, at least you have something to hang your hat on 
and you could call yourself a leader and you could say you actually won on something, not everything, but something, but something real and something big. Get us a couple of those wins, then we call you a leader. But if you then, if you don't do that, and this is in the future, it hasn't happened yet. So whether it's Jayapal or anyone else, they can't tell us right now, no, I plan to surrender in the future, so you're not allowed to criticize me. No, your actions will determine it. If you do the right thing, we call you a hero. If you surrender on all of our priorities and then insist that we do cheerleading for Pelosi, no, then you are not a hero and you are not a leader. It's not for me to decide, it's for you to decide. And so if you don't do it, we're not gonna, nobody, it's not the old days of the media. The mainstream media will play ball, will do exactly as Biden and Pelosi tell them to do. That's their job, okay? For independent media and progressive media, you don't control us. And I don't care how much you tut tut, I don't care. Well, nobody's gonna play ball. If the bill sucks, we're gonna tell everybody that the bill sucks and you signed on to it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.